Bonjour, Meshko Paganon, Quain Edition of Cosmundo Dem. Hi, everybody. It's Sandy Boucher here yet again with the 52 Steps to Reconciliation. And before I say anything else, holy moly's, you're still here. And I so absolutely appreciate that. The truth is, as an Anishinaabe Kwe, as an indigenous woman, walking the reconciliation path isn't even a choice for me. Dealing with these challenges that we're talking about in this series is a day-to-day -day reality for me. But if you're non-Indigenous watching this, you're here by choice. That action makes you an ally, and I super appreciate it. And of course, if you're Indigenous watching this, welcome to my journey. I would love to hear from you. And by the way, that's another thing. I absolutely love the emails. Every single time I release a video, I hear back from you, whether it's to hear that you never thought of it that way or to reassure me that you're absolutely enjoying the journey. And I welcome those emails, so please keep sending them. Today, we're gonna talk about a topic that to me, the only word that comes to mind is heartbreaking. And I actually mentioned it to you once before. It's the whole idea, the concept around cultural appropriation. I want to show you something that I think is really going to help you understand just how tragic this is. So here is a necklace, which I have to think is kind of pretty. Uh, problem, I bought it at a big box store, a department store, a non-Indigenous retailer. It is not Indigenous made. It is not authentic. The person that made this committed cultural appropriation. Now, why is that tragic? Because unfortunately, many, many Indigenous people exist in poverty, or even if they're making money, they're barely making it by. Buying things like this at the low prices that they're always sold at might be the only way these people can express their cultural pride. There's so many Indigenous people that have been separated from their culture that haven't had the opportunity to learn the language or the beadwork. I know there was a big uproar about indigenous costumes at Halloween, but I couldn't help thinking how my son would have loved to been able to dress up in the costume, only because for the first time he would be accepted as who he is. So I came across a rule the other day. I did not come up with this. It just stopped me in my tracks. And the rule is, if indigenous people can't do it, then you shouldn't. If you can wear indigenous beadwork to your office and all you're gonna get is compliments, but an obviously indigenous person, a coworker was to do the same thing and they'd be challenged for making someone uncomfortable, then it's not something you should be doing. Instead of worrying about having the right to wear the jewelry, let's work together to make sure our cultures and our office environments are welcome for everyone to celebrate whatever culture they belong to. That's how we eliminate cultural appropriation. Until next week, I'd love to hear from you and let me know what you think. Take care. Bye-bye.